Today, we're going to take a look at six Synology DSM tips and tricks that you might not be aware of. These are in no particular order, but I'm hopeful that you learned something about DSM that you didn't know before. Coming in at number one will be login screen customization. There are various items of the login screen that you can change, including modifying the background, adding a logo, updating the login page title, and displaying welcome or footer messages. This is fully customizable through DSM and can be completed by logging into DSM, opening the control panel, selecting login portal, and then editing the login style. From there, you can change the login page title, select a default background or upload your own, add a logo or include messages. When you'd like to preview how it looks, you can select the preview button at the bottom. This will launch a new window that will show you exactly how your login page looks. If you're happy with the results, go back to DSM and save. Moving forward, your login page will now be in that new style. Moving on to number two, we're gonna look at how you can customize a few settings in DSM. If you select the account icon in the top right, then select personal, there are a few settings that you can change here that will update DSM. First, if you look in the display preferences, you can update the main menu style. You'll have two options here, with full screen opening the apps to a full screen page and drop down functioning as a drop down menu. Next, you can update the desktop icon size. There are two options, with normal being slightly larger than classic. You can also change the text color or customize the background by selecting a default wallpaper that automatically comes with DSM or uploading your own. Finally, if you select the Others tab, you'll be able to modify a few settings to change the way DSM functions. The Resume DSM option will automatically reopen any applications that you had opened the last time you closed DSM. This really just ensures that you start where you left off. You can also explore these other options, though they won't add as much to the DSM experience as the first option did. We'll now take a look at number three, which is DSM password settings. If you select Control Panel, User and Group, then Advanced, you'll have a bunch of password options that you can modify here. The first will allow non-administrator users to reset their password if they forget it. This will add a Forgot Password section to the login page where users can automatically reset their password with an email. Please keep in mind that all users will need an email address assigned in DSM to have this functionality work. Next, you can set specific password requirements as well as a password expiration. This will ensure that all users are forced to use secure passwords as well as potentially password expiration if you decide to set it up that way. Coming in at number four will be firewall interfaces. If you're utilizing Synology's firewall, the default setting will add or remove rules to all interfaces. This means that each LAN interface or any VPNs that you currently have running will use the same firewall rules. However, you can explicitly change these rules and ensure that each interface has different rules if you'd like. This is a great option for people who have certain devices connecting via different interfaces. Just keep in mind that you'll have to modify your firewall configuration if you already have it set up using all interfaces. It also works slightly different in the sense that instead of having a deny all rule at the bottom of the all interfaces section, the services that you want to allow for all interfaces will only have allow rules in the all interfaces tab. When you select a LAN or VPN interface, you'll add the services that should be accessed on that interface only. At the bottom, you'll have to deny access, which means that if rules are not matched in the All Interfaces tab or the specific interface that you're on, traffic will be blocked. This ensures that rules are first checked for all interfaces, then they move on to the individual interface that you're trying to access. If an allow rule does not exist for that service, traffic will be automatically blocked. At number five, we have application privileges. As you begin to use your NAS, you'll notice that you are adding more and more applications to it. However, you might be adding items that you don't want individual users to be able to access. If you open the control panel and select application privileges, you can edit a service, select default privileges, and uncheck grant this privilege to all users by default. This will ensure that the user group must have permission to the service and user accounts will not have permission by default. 
You will have to go through each individual service to ensure that it has the correct setting, but moving forward, users will need explicit permission to be able to access these applications. Finally, coming in at number six, we have Synology's Log Center. For the most part, logs are normally created for general functionality and will update any time something on the NAS changes. However, there are times where you may need to view these logs to see if things are functioning properly on your NAS. If you select your applications list, you can then open the log center, which is installed by default. As you'll see, there are many different log entries that are added here, with almost all of them being harmless in this specific case. They also don't really add much value as there's nothing wrong right now. With that said, if you were to run into an issue, it may be written to this log center, which can help you troubleshoot the problem. If you're experiencing an issue, it never hurts to check the log center and see if anything is written here, as it may help you solve your issue. This has saved me countless times as it doesn't always tell you how to fix the issue, but at least gives you the information that you need to troubleshoot whatever problem you may be facing. Also, you can select notifications at the bottom and change the notification rules to automatically alert if a log from the error, critical, alert, or emergency category is added to your log center. This will ensure that you're notified of anything that's written to the logs that is out of the ordinary. You can also choose to send notifications if the number of logs per second exceeds a set number or receive notifications on specific keywords. As I said earlier, this is not something that will help you on a day-to-day -day basis, but knowing that you can open the log center to view the current system status, as well as any log entries for issues that you might be facing is very important. In summary, if you're experiencing just about any issue on your NAS, you should immediately check the log center. There are also other applications like Docker that have their own logs, so you must be sure to check those as well, assuming that the issue that you're facing is in a specific application. Overall, you won't necessarily be able to solve your problem, but you'll at least have a good idea of what might be causing it, which might point you in the right direction. Now those were six tips and tricks that I'm hoping will help inside of DSM. I want to be clear that there are tons of different options in DSM, as well as the DSM applications that you have installed on your NAS. Depending on what you're using your NAS for, there might be hidden settings that you can check to customize your experience further. I urge you to open some of those often used applications and explore the settings to see if there are any quality of life improvements that you can make. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If this video helped you out, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel if you like this type of content. Thanks guys.